Hello everybody, it's Caleb. In this video I wanted to talk about uh, the pros and cons of surrogate or natural keys. So basically we're going to compare and contrast them here. So over here on the left side we got surrogate. And then over here on the right side we got some natural. Alright, we're going to have a little battle here, right? We're going to figure out which one's the best. Let me just box this to keep this out of here. Alright, so what are some good things about natural keys? Alright, well first, one of the first good things about... Oh, that was really weak. One of the first good things about natural keys is that you don't have to define any new data. If you don't remember from the last video, let me just redefine them here. Natural keys are used are columns used as your key that are already defined within your table. They're natural to what you want to store. Surrogate keys are just kind of added, like a user ID or a uh, car ID or a credit card ID or a comment ID. They're surrogate, they have no real world meaning. So natural, not natural. Get it? Cool. So some good things about natural is you don't actually have to define any new data any new data, I don't know if you could hear me there or not, I kind of stuttered on that, but anyways, uh, you don't really have to define any new data because it's already within your table and you can use that as your natural key. So you're required to store less information in your database, so you get smaller data, you get you have a smaller database, right? So that's one good thing. Uh, so what's a downside to natural keys? Well, a downside is that sometimes you're not going to be able to find a really good natural key. Because uh, if you look over here, we want our keys to be unique, never changing, and never empty, or null. Well, if we have a natural key, we have to find one that fits all three of these, and it has to be a good one that would make sense to use as a, as a natural key. Like, you might not want to use a combination of 20 columns to make natural key, right? But that's one of the downsides to a natural key, is you have to figure out what natural key to use and there's not always a great option uh, now optimally you should have a natural key or at least something that could be used as a natural key within every table to uh, best ha to have the best design to ensure uniqueness not just by a surrogate key if you use one but by naturally what's being stored so, like just an example, if we have a comments table, we could have a comment by a certain user on a certain web page or whatever. And uh, what, what forces it to be unique? Well, the combination of that, as well as the date it's posted, or the time it's posted, that's going to be unique because you can't have two comments from the same user at the same time on the same web page. It's not possible, right? I mean, unless you like glitch the system somehow, which shouldn't happen. <laughs> well, that's an example of using natural keys. Uh, the downside, like I said, you might not always be able to figure out what to use for your natural key. That one was a good example because naturally we could figure out a natural key. Right? Follow me? The other thing is natural keys have real world values, real world meaning, right? So you have connections to real world meaning. So for example in the comments, the actual comment in combination with the user who posted it, in combination with the time it was posted and the page it was posted on, or any of those four columns to be used as a natural key. Well those have real world meaning and as your database develops over time, the database application might change or be updated or new meaning is given to the database and what it's supposed to do. That means that your natural keys could change over time and have new uh, new meaning or the uh, actual values could change in some instances and we do not want that obviously because it has to be unique, never changing, and never null. If for example we make it to where we do have to change the natural keys well that would kind of be like crossing this one out and that's possible, like we could update the values of all the keys, but that's going to require us to update all connections between tables, and that's going to require a lot of resources from our server, and that's just a bad design in general. So those are most of the uh, cons of natural keys. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to surrogate, right? Okay. 
So surrogate keys. Well, obviously the first downside is you have to add a column to your table no matter what. Even if you have a, uh, a uh, for example, if it's naturally unique, well, you might, like, if you have a comment from a username, well, that username is going to help ensure uniqueness, and you still add a, a surrogate key, well, then you're adding unnecessary data because you're adding a new column and you have to store all these numbers. One of the pros of surrogate keys are is that they're typically numbers, where oftentimes natural keys can be words or anything like that. That's good because typically numbers are easier to work with, but not always. Now, a couple other things. Besides the fact that you have to add a new data, n new column, which requires you to store more data, it's that uh, it can be confusing sometimes when all you're working with is just combinations of numbers and we have like, we have a column, let's say like a commenter for a comments table, and we just have an I, we have the value like 700, 400, uh, 7,462. Well, this is kind of clear. It's talking about the user with the ID of 7,462. 7, Sometimes columns won't be very descriptive, though, and that would be a fault in the designers, so make sure you name your columns right. But when working with other people, you can sometimes get confused exactly what reference is what, and you have to do a little bit more thinking and check the uh, actual database structure the way it's programmed or however else like that. So that's a couple things that are confusing. Okay, so, now you're probably wondering, okay, so which one am I supposed to use? Well, it actually it just depends on what you want to do, if you prefer to use natural or surrogate keys. But typically, you'll want to pick one and use that throughout all of the database. I said database really weird there, I was like, database. I was like, database, rather than database, I was like, database. Anyways, uh, so like say, let's say I decide to use surrogate keys. Well, that means every column should get a ID, or at least a combination of IDs. Natural, if I decide to use natural, well, that means every column should try to be used as a natural key. Because if we mix and match, sometimes we're going to have a surrogate key, sometimes we're going to have a natural key, and it's going to be super confusing, and we're not going to know what's going on. So typically you want to kind of keep one or the other. The other thing is... I don't know what the other thing was, but uh, yeah, typically one or the other. Now for my sake, I personally am going to use surrogate keys, although that's not saying that they're better in any way. I just prefer surrogate keys because it's simple for me, because every time I make a table, I, all I gotta do is make an ID with the, t like if it's a user table, all I gotta do is make a column, user ID, and boom, we're done. That's all I gotta worry about. And I don't really have to worry about uh, it ever changing or it ever becoming something different or anything. It's just a random number, 7,254. Well, that has no real world meaning. Now, keep in mind though that if you do use surrogate keys, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't have them have any real world value. So for example, a student ID, if we give these student IDs out to the students, that's not really a good idea to use as the surrogate key because it's actually a natural key it has real world meaning. So those are just some things and you can find tons and tons of stuff on the internet about natural or surrogate keys. It's basically like a war between two database sides. Oh, we're the natural keys. Oh, we're the surrogate keys. Oh, I'm gonna kill you. Boom. You know what I mean? So yeah. Don't freak out, just figure out what works best for you. There's some minor performance differences, but I mean, I, I don't really know all of them. So, yeah, believe it or not, I don't know something. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyways, try them both out if you want. Look up stuff, look up um, which one performs better or which one will work best for your application or your database because that's really what matters. All right, so yeah, peace out. Check you guys. Uh, check this. Gosh, I can't talk today. Check out my next video, and I will see you guys then. And we'll be learning some other cool stuff. So yeah, see you guys then.